Hi, everyone, and thanks for coming. Sorry for that. It's not our fault. It's right. Um, oops. OK. My name is uh, Pierre-André Leny, and I'm a French or GIS consultant. And uh, Bertrand Dumeneu is a researcher. We are going to present you a, a beginning project called uh, Social Dynamics in uh, Urban Context. With the goal of, uh, the goal is to build some uh, open tools and data set to uh, explore the sp spatial and social uh, history of Paris in a period uh, from the revolution to the, the middle of uh, 18th century. It's, it is a project funded by the French national agency called uh, INR. And I uh, will let uh, Bertrand for the first part. Yeah, okay, thanks. So hi. Um, this talk is about uh, studying social facts uh, in history that are located in space and um, the goal is uh, that uh, the idea is as traced out by Andrew Abbott, a sociologist of the Chicago School. Um, if you uh, study the spatial properties of social facts, this is the only way you can uh, understand it fully and very deeply. And in fact, social facts, they are not only located, they are um, in, in a kind of, there is a kind of special complex relationships between uh, social facts and social phenomena and the geographical space. First of all, uh, social facts, they shape uh, geographical space. Like if you, you can imagine in a city, if you create a new street, this is resulting from, um, uh, political and economical processes, but also the geographic space has an influence on uh, society. And I think the maybe the simple example of that is uh, gentrification, where uh, changes in the shape of a neighborhood will have some effect on who will live there. And those two relationships, they are in fact interlocked and they form a kind of loop which is evolving through time. And when historians are working on social phenomena. They are studying this evolving loop in time using both the space, geographical space, and social data. And now, nowadays, we can use GIS, of course, to study this kind of uh, phenomena. And this is a very simple example that we are uh, doing right now at my lab about the regentrification of Paris uh, during the 19th century, where the idea is to study the evolution of wealth inequalities in the city over one century with an eye uh, on the morphological changes uh, in the geographical the structure of the city. And we are using very common, a very common JS stack, uh, mainly QGIS and PostGIS, and extracting data uh, from multiple data sources uh, covering the whole period uh, of course, spatial sources like maps, uh, cadastres, and atlases at different times in the 19th century, and social sources, mainly sensor and inheritance registers, which provide us with um, people's name, with their addresses, and some information about uh, their income, how much tax they pay, or the value of their possessions. And of course, we need to extract data, geographic vector data from that to be able to quantitatively uh, study and analyze uh, this phenomena. So we extracted um, the different road networks to study the structure, the structure of the city, and also uh, the addresses contained in the maps in order to build a gadgeteer of historical addresses. And we did the same extracting data, I mean, uh, from the sensor registers and uh, inheritance registers. And we geocoded this uh, data using the historical gadgeteer we uh, built before. And this allows us to uh, study the structure, structural change in the city using the different uh, road networks. Uh, dating from the end of the 18th century to the end of the 19th century and study how local changes in the, um, in the shape of the network has global effects on its uh, structure. And we also, oh, yeah, yeah, I know it's heat maps. <laughs> uh, we also uh, have ways to, it's, it's allow us to, to, to map, in fact, to map oh, what's happening. 
Uh, it's not in the in the slide. <laughs> it's not an animation. I don't know. Please? Yeah. Something. I don't know. It does nothing. On the PDF yeah. and control, yeah, control L should be okay. Yeah, great, thanks. Okay, so this is a regentrification of Paris, where the richest inhabitants we are living in the very center of the city in the beginning of the 19th century, then moved slowly to the west during the during uh, the century, and finally came back. Came back. There were new rich people in the city at the end of the century uh, due to the creation of new boulevards and new city squares in the center of Paris. And so in 2019, this kind of work is pretty common, I mean, in historical sciences, because GIS in historical sciences is finally a thing. And this is mainly due to uh, the use and the extensive use of QGIS in, uh, in academics. So we have really to thank the contributors in the community of QGIS without it would we could be we can't be anything uh, we can't do anything without QGIS uh, maybe. and also we rely on massive amounts of open archival documents such as map for example which are published open uh, openly by di digital libraries on the web and um, there is a um, global movement in the academic to uh, publish and to open the research data, which is also helped by public policies, at least in Europe, uh, that encourages and even sometimes force in, in France uh, to open uh, research data. But there are still some problems uh, with the still some things to do. First, uh, the universe of geographic historical data is made of small data sets that have a low level of redundancy and a, a low overlaying because uh, historians are working most of the time on very specific parts of space and very specific period of time and they rely on a few, mm, I mean, historical sources are scarce, you know, there is not a lot there, is, there are not a lot of uh, historical sources uh, on one place. Um, and also building geohistorical data and extracting geohistorical data is a difficult task because you have often to do it at least partially, manually, and it's like it's a matter of building geo, uh, geo spatial temporal data from uh, with an aggregative process where you are going to take some pieces of information and bring them together from uh, historical sources. And most of the time the data sets come with uh, very few documentation, so there is a lack of lineage metadata. It's ma it makes the data hard to reuse and sometimes hard to understand and it's hard to... Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty complicated to know if there is bias in the data, which is a problem when you try to uh, model and study historical facts. So the idea of the project is that we could uh, improve those points by being uh, specific tools to help historians uh, collaborate and build in an iter iterative and uh, aggregative way to build uh, and share geohistorical data to analyze uh, old states of the geographical space and locate social facts. So that's why we are cr starting the Sodico project, as Pierre said, is uh, funded by the French National Research Agency. It started just a few months ago. It's a four-year project and we have almost uh, uh, half a million euros to hire mostly uh, postdocs and engineers and PhD, yeah, to create PhD, uh, to, 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 to hire PhD students. And it's, it brings together people from different horizons, like people from GI science with the IGM, uh, historians from the uh, School of Higher uh, studies, studies in Social Sciences, com 
computer scientists, people from the National Archive of France, and people like Pierre who have a foot in the industry and the world of phosphorgy. It relies on different previous projects which involved most of the team. Uh, and just one example of this is a first collaborative experiment, uh, which was uh, the goal was to digitize the Cassini map of France, which is a w single snapshot covering its, uh, its uh, historical map that covers the entire country in the late uh, 18th century. And it's very unique because it's global, it's very detailed, and it's pretty homogeneous for uh, historical sources. So the idea was to uh, extract and digitize manually, I mean, the road network to perform analysis comparing the network from the 18th century with nowadays. We started with almost uh, 50 people, 50 researchers and historians. And in uh, less than a year, we were able to extract the full network from uh, the historical georeference map of Cassini. And uh, if we take the, f and yeah, we finally did it in almost a year. The open, the data set, the full data set is open and published on the Harvard Dataverse, and it comes with a data paper uh, to provide documentation, a full documentation about how we created uh, those data. And this is just a slide about the top 27 main contributors. Each color is one contributor uh, of this, uh, this experiment. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Bertrand. So this uh, digitizing is, is uh, very easy. It's a simple process. But uh, what we want to do finally now is to, to have a reproducible approach to study the evolution of Paris over uh, 150 years. We want to analyze uh, social and spatial coevolutions, producing a critical analysis of primary sources. It's really important. Uh, building geotechnical data so, uh, in a semi-automatic collaborative way. That's, uh, that's one of the goals. Yeah. We want to implement and make the approach available to others uh, by developing reusable, free and open source tools tailored for geotechnical data. And in fact, we want to finally provide a free and open web platform to construct uh, and share data. We have to be punchy because we, I think we haven't got a lot of time. It's not really a success, but sources, like Bertrand says, we have many, many uh, old sources, some Paris trade uh, directories, Paris city maps and atlases, and some of the uh, cadastre. So the goal, we said, is to build a platform. The main goal is to develop a platform uh, composed by several components, uh, in independent components. We are, we are going to build this platform on um, force tools, free and open source tools, not only geospatial, but uh, always uh, force. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. We have so many things to do, so even if we have a half a million, we have uh, a lot of work. And we want to develop uh, generic tools to permit reuse. So we, are, we would like, we plan to develop six uh, main components called uh, georeferencer, uh, social data extractor, semi-automatic collaborative uh, digitizer, digitizer, sorry, and a uh, collaborative social data editor, a geohistorical matcher, and a geocoder. So it, as you can see, we have a lot, we have four years of work. Uh, in terms of technical aspect, we, have, uh, we, we plan to have a very central uh, geohistorical database using so PoGIS, and we are um, we are using a uh, Phosphor-G and uh, OSGO stack to uh, to, to develop uh, these tools. The platform will be uh, OGC compliant with uh, a lot of WMS, WFS, and uh, probably some WPS. As we said, is uh, the project is a uh, begin, so we all things are not uh, really uh, yet uh, ready. We are using a Docker orchestration for that. And uh, one important thing is that uh, all the project is hosted by a, a project called Humanum. It's a very large uh, research uh, public structure for digital humanities. We need uh, this uh, platform and this uh, help to technical infrastructure, servers, uh, and many other things who are really important. I'm sorry, I can't really watch you because uh, I have to watch the screen. 
The first, um, we have already de uh, developed a, a proof of concept of uh, an historical geocoder, okay? I think that we know what it is uh, geocoding, but we are going to add the, the date dimension, the temporal dimension. So we have got an in-based geocoder uh, based on the PostgreSQL with a, on a PLPG uh, SQL, so store uh, procedures, and uh, with an API. So it's, uh, it's a proof of concept now of uh, an historical geocoder. It works. You can, uh, you can follow the link if you want. Classic geocoders, you, you take an address and we will have an answer with our coordinates. And uh, in our case, we want to have an address plus a date. And sometimes it is a fuzzy date. It's not really absolute, uh, absolute date. So like you say, I'm going to use the laser. You have some uh, fuzzy date. It's more period than a, than, a, than a date, which we are easy to use. So historical geocoder will be address uh, plus date and the response will be coordinates and the data source. It's really uh, uh, important for us. Concerning the open source model and uh, licenses, it's important. So our goal is really to increase uh, open science, okay, uh, in historical science using uh, free and open source software and uh, reproducible science need force today. We are, um, the, the license will not be unique. It's, uh, it will be a platform composed by uh, many other and several components, like I said. So there are so many, it's a big mess, you know, like open source license with uh, contamination or other things. So we want to always, uh, we are going to uh, always aim for maximum uh, openness. Uh, today, it's li licenses used is uh, Afro GPL. It's not uh, the most uh, openness, but uh, it's well adapted to API context. And uh, the component of, uh, I think, the geocoder, uh, there are other parts on the MIT license. The benefits for the 4G community, uh, it's uh, all the development will be uh, totally open source. Uh, we are going to develop open tools. We are going to share our data sets in a collaborative approach, uh, like the first project. Uh, we are very on the, on the crowdsourcing uh, approach. and. We are open to contribution. That's uh, one of the reasons we are here today. It's to, uh, to, to continue to have some informal collaboration or formal. Uh, we have some with um, New York Public Library and uh, from a genealogist in, in France or the a World Historical uh, Gazette. It's a goal uh, for contribution today. We, are, um, we have many ideas, but we are finally a small team. The project is uh, totally free and open source uh, code, like we said. So we are open for contribution, mainly for development uh, at this time, at, the, at this time of the project. You can have a look at the repository and uh, our website, okay? And we hope that in the, in the future, probably last year or other years later, uh, a possible replication for cities with uh, similar sources, maybe like Bucharest or Vienna. And I think it stopped now, <laughs> but we have got normally a conclusion. So, like we said, it is a, a French national agency research uh, funded project um, in a multidisciplinary way. So we are working with a historian, a geographer, a computer science uh, people. You know, it's uh, sometimes difficult to uh, to be able to work together with uh, in different uh, disciplinary. And we have to fight uh, and to success with uh, some challenges, finally, like scientific and, uh, and technical uh, challenges. I think there one another bullet point, but uh, I forget it. So thank you. And it's time for, for questions. I don't know really if we have. Thank you. Let's <laughs> for this sort of technical issue, let's hope they will solve it. So one meaningful question. <laughs> Who has it? Yes. Well, I'm not sure about meaningful, but uh, just out of curiosity, um, when you're talking about the geocoder, the historical geocoder, do you also plan a reverse one? Yeah, I, I, I will uh, probably let Bertrand re respond on that. Want to reserve? It's okay. Yeah, so. Um, the idea that for, for now we have the proof of concept made of a direct geocoder, but we plan to rely on existing geocoder like Pelias, for example. So there is uh, reverse geocoding in that case. 
but for just for our use case, we are mostly interested in direct geocoding because the, the main use case for historians is to take social data uh, with addresses and place them in space, in, 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 yeah, in the geographical space. So we won't do it ourselves, but uh, if, it, if we collaborate and contribute to Pelias to add, for example, uh, uh, the historical side of it and integrate temporal, uh, the temporal dimension, in this case, you sure. We will have the reverse geocoding. Yeah, yeah no, just thinking it would be fun. Sure. Okay, so thank you and sorry for the, the condition. I think the, the laptop is uh, actually. Thank you very much. We will try to solve it.